Okay, so we are what class 14, I believe. Can y'all hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, hold on one moment. Okay, so if you have your house opened up, uh, first things first, we want to remove some things so we can see the first level of the floor. So um, click on your roof and hit H to hide it. Click on your windows, click H. Click on everything that's on that top floor and press H to hide it. You can click on your windows, hide those, you can hide your doors, uh, yeah, hide the top floor, and hide the roof over here, hide these steps, yeah, we're going to just um, hide a good amount of things, we're going to hide these doors too, that way I can see on the inside right there. Okay, so you just basically want to see the first floor, the inside of the um, stuff of the first floor. Now, remember, when you're hiding stuff, do not hit delete. Hit H. H to hide. H to hide. Let me cut the screencast keys on. Alrighty. So, H to hide. All right. So now I don't think that we um, that we loop cut this um, this base floor here. So let's do that real quick. You want to click on your base floor. Uh, make sure that we go up here to our snap and put it on vertex select because we're going to have to line um, a couple of loop cuts up with the base of our um, of our floor here. So once you're on there, hit edit mode. God, it's so cold in here. Hold on, give me a second. Let me put my sweater or something. God dang. Oh, let me see the one too. Okie dokie. All right. So if you have uh, selected your uh, uh, first floor floor and you are now in edit mode on face select, what we're going to start doing, right, we're going to start doing adding in some loop cuts. So the loop cuts that we want to do, we want to make sure that our loop cut is on the inside of, um, of, the, uh, hold on, of these areas right here, like see we could line it up I'm gonna probably line this up with um we're probably the edge of this window here or no 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 you know what right maybe right there well no I line it up with the edge of the window so let me undo my loop cut I'm gonna place my loop cut back in here right and I'm gonna now move my mouse up to this corner of that window there and I'm gonna hold control for that loop cut to snap to that vertice and then lock it in Don't this class too hard. We're gonna get started in your homework, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you grab your snack. You good? Yeah, okay. All right. So now our next loop cut, we're going to add it, and I'm gonna go up to this corner right here that's inside this little storage closet, and snap it right there. And it's whatever your preference is when you want to lock in your loop cuts, you know what I'm saying, of how you want to, uh, of how you want to, you know, UV unwrap your um, floor. Because these areas that we're doing, we're getting this set up to like maybe put carpet in here or some concrete or some wood or, you know what I'm saying, whatever, you know what I'm saying, to be your, you know what I'm saying, personal preference. All right, so uh, we're gonna, I'm going to do another loop cut from this angle up here this time, and I'm going to lock it in right there on that inside right there. next loop cut I'm gonna add in from here will probably be at the corner of this door here or maybe at the door itself uh, let me see uh, you know what I'm gonna put it at the at the door yeah at the corner of the door so yeah so now I got 
loop cut there. So now this room right here is boxed off for my um, for my UV mapping when I get ready to UV map. All right, so now my next set of loop cuts, I'm gonna start now on boxing off this area that's um, in the stairwell. So we're gonna start maybe another loop cut So I'm going to start another loop cut from this middle portion up here. And I'm going to lock this in on this inside corner right there of the stairwell. Let me know if I'm moving too fast or if you need to stop or if, um, or if you're um, I'm having issues doing your loop cuts. Please, please stop me. Please stop me. No big deal. Just, just stop me. All right. So now since I got that side done, we're going to do another loop cut lock that in and get this other side of the stairwell in that corner down in that little small corner right there lock it to that vertice right. then we're going to go over here on this side between these two um, loop cuts and we're going to grab loop cut right here and then we're going to lock it to that same corner and I think um, well well, that's not too. I could, I could keep, I could keep that one right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. I could keep that one. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 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 done then. All right. But if if yours, if you don't have a line here, or if it's too far from the inside or something like that, uh, make you a loop cut between this line and that line, right? And then lock it to. If you want to lock it to this this edge right here, you can. If you want to lock it to that edge. I'm saying that'll seal, that'll uh, box out your stairwell. So we got this room done. We got that room done. Um, for the outside, we could do concrete. We could do grass. You know, depending on how you know you wanted to. Um, um, at, um, even got asphalt. You know, what I'm saying there are asphalt textures that you can put in. You know, what I'm saying anything for these these areas that are um, that are out here. Now remember, when you're doing edge loops, um, it automatically places you in edge mode. So make sure that you go back to face select once you're um, once you're done doing that. For as a matter of fact, well, let's let's uh, let's see. Uh, as a matter of fact, instead of uh, doing the whole thing like that. I'm gonna put another loop cut here, right, for underneath the carport, and I'm gonna lock it to the inside, the outside, right there. Yeah, lock it to the outside. Then that way, all of this out here can be like grass or something. You know what I'm saying, well, all of that right there could be grass, and then this area right here could be uh, could be asphalt or something. And as a matter of fact, uh, as I grab textures, I'll drop them in the um, I'll drop them in the uh, in the chat too. So let's see what we can grab. Let's go to SketchUp. All right, we're gonna go to let's see. We got materials. We got architecture. Uh, no, sweetheart, no ice cream right now until after you finish eating. Okay. All right. All right, and then paving outdoors. I think that may have some. What's this concrete? Oh, we got any roads? Let's see, roads, roads, roads. Uh, roads. Cool. Okay, roads. Asphalt. It's your asphalt. No pun intended. Okay, so let's grab this one here. And I'll download the freezer one. Let's go to here. Let's drop this in my textures. Put that there. And here. Extract it. Alright. Alright, so now that we we have um our outs well everything pretty much um edged up to how we want to, you know, UV unwrap it. Uh, I'm going
going to add a default texture in here, that default texture. And then I'm gonna add another texture in here, new, we're gonna call it asphalt. All right, go to our base color, go to our image, go to open. Come over here to my bookmarks, go to textures, and I did. Let me now see. you're going a little bit fast. Okay. All right. So once again, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add some materials. So we're going to. So where 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 are you uh, where are you stuck at adding a material? Well, I finished all my loop cuts and then you started going crazy with the materials and I didn't get a chance to figure out what folders you were sticking it in. And going everywhere. Oh, you 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 don't have to worry about the folders I'm sticking it in. You 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 your folders will be your folders. I'm saying so once you add a once you go over to material and you add a new material you'll go to open what well, you'll go to hold on let me you'll go to base color and it'll come it'll bring up as a matter of fact let me let me let me remove all this hold on and can I chime in real quick don't be like me and have 50 million textures all over the place like since you're starting with this new knob I would definitely recommend you have a centralized area for your texture and material like for real though I gotta keep yes, all. definitely. So yeah, I'm in, like a I'm in a texture folder, and then inside that, I made like different categories, like like cloth, glass, metals. So it's easy to grab shit. I'm sorry, you're recording. Stop. <laughs> all right. So once you add the material in here that you want to use, you go down to base color, click base color, go to image texture then go to open you will go to wherever you save your textures in my case I have my bookmark over here in order to add a bookmark you go to the folder that you're that you locate your textures in and then once you double click on that folder you can hit this plus button and it'll create a bookmark for that particular folder mm -hmm. Now I have mine in here marked by my modified date, so I know that this is the texture that I brought in because it's the you know the most recent texture. So you open up that folder, select that image, then click on open image. And you'll see it update onto the texture up here. Now since I don't want to, I don't a lot of these textures they come in uh, defaulted with uh, with the specular up halfway, so I just turn mine all the way down because I don't I, it, if it's not shiny then yeah. All right, so I'm now going to, if you have a texture in place that you want to use, we can get ready to apply that texture. And so in this case, I want to grab this square and then hold shift and shift to like this one, this one, this one, and this one. And at that point now, I'm going to go and assign my texture. All right. Now I don't want it that big, so I need to UV unwrap it. So in order to UV unwrap, first and foremost what you'll do is you'll bring your mouse down to the bottom left hand corner, bottom left hand corner right here, like the foremost corner, not in the black area down there, but make sure you're in the 3D, the 3D port. And then you're going to click and hold and then you're going to drag to the right. It's going to duplicate the screen. Anytime one of these screens is duplicated and you need to close it, all you do is come back down to the bottom left hand corner of the main screen that you want to keep open. And you're going to click and hold again and you're going to drag to the left until you see the icon change to the little arrow. Once it changes to the little arrow, you release and it closes that window. So to open, once again, go back down to the left-hand corner, click and hold, drag to the left. All right. So since it made a duplicate of that um that window, we now need to change it to our UV mapping window. So we go up here to our top corner, to our editor type, and we click on the drop-down arrow and we change it to a the UV editor window. And you can just zoom in and zoom out. And as you see, it has the um. It has my map of the um, square so that I clicked, but it's not uh, it's not uh, scaled up yet. So now what I want to do now, since I already have this area selected over in my um, my 3D port, 
I'm going to select U to bring up my unwrapping menu. So once again, you hit U to bring up your unwrapping menu, and all you do from this point is select unwrap. So as you see, it takes it takes those faces and it maps those faces onto um, onto my palette. You know what I'm saying? At a um, on the X and Y axis. Now from this point. We still know that um, asphalt is not that uh, big, so we're going to bring our mouse over into our UV editor. We're going to hit A to select all of the vertices, well, yeah, all of the um, vert vertices in here. And remember to select everything, What, no matter if you're on this screen or that screen, this, the keys are the same, so you'll select A. So once I select A, I'm going to hit S to scale up. And I'm gonna I'm gonna look over here in my 3D viewport as well to scale it to you know to where I think you know what I'm saying is it's a good level. About right there. Again, we'll left click to lock it in. And then now when I go back over here to this screen, see it got scaled down. All right. Any questions or issues so far? City, you good over there? Well, you doing, um, is everything you got your texture in? Nah, I'm, I'm just watching you. Oh, shit. <laughs> All right. Hold on one second. Let me switch my paper. Okay. All right. So, next, let's grab some grass. Okay, so you don't necessarily have to select like, you know, each texture one by one. You can drag your select box to select multiple ones and then hold shift and then drag your box to select around. Now, if you had landscape, it will be almost uh, similar. So let's hit our plus key again. Now that we have our boxes selected, we're going to hit our plus key. We're going to hit new. We're going to double click to name it. I'm going to name this grass. After I name it, I go down here to my base color, hit the yellow dot, and then go to a image texture. Once the image texture comes up for me to open, I click open. Um, I go to whatever texture where I have grass, in this case, I think I have a preset one in here, so let's type in grass. Yeah, there we go. There we go. All right, select my texture, and then click Open Image. Wait for it to populate over here. I'll take down my specular, and then hit Assign. All right, so since my grass came in super large, we're going to hit you to unwrap it. All right. Once it unwraps, I'm going to go over to my UV editor, hit A for all, and then hit S to scale, and then scale this down. And that looks, that looks about all. Uh, that looks almost about good. Okay, so say for instance, you clicked off of the area, right, that you had um, selected. You can just do a quick Control Z to undo to reselect all of that good little stuff. Hit A because I do want to kind of look at the grass I'm scaling from a different angle to scale it down some, and then rescale. Yeah, that looks about that looks good. All right. So bam, we have our grass. Mm -hmm. So now we can work on uh, this inside over here. So since this is a storage closet, I may do tile or concrete. Uh, what do you suggest, City? I would put tile in the storage closet. All right, all right. Let's get some tile. I don't, I don't think I, uh, I don't think I have. Slate tile, so that would be under what stone tiles or something like that. Mm, those are pretty. The, the second row, third one in. All right, all right. Let's grab that.
material. Call it slate. All right. Go down to our base color here. Select base color, image texture. Select open. Let's go to our textures. And open up our slate. Wait for it to populate. Take down my specular, make sure I have that selected over here. Yep. And then hit slate and then assign. Alright, since it's so big, we're gonna hit U now. Since I have it selected, I'm gonna hit U to unwrap it. Remember U to unwrap when you're in edit mode. Then click unwrap. And then we're going to now okay, so all right, right. So let me let me let me let me explain this. Okay, so I want to have these towels proportionate, right? I don't want to have them like uh like cut off or something like that. So instead of hitting A in scaling or something like that, what I I can do this instead. Uh, first we can scale a little bit, you know what I'm saying, to get a couple of them in there. But then at this point I can grab this side over here, hit G and X. So and then while I'm looking at it on my um, on my UV screen, well on my 3D port, I can move these to the left. You know what I'm saying? Move these to the left a little bit to line them up right there. Oh, hold on, I want to do that one on the on the wall. So let's zoom in. Hit G. Now we're gonna go over to our UV area. We hit G to move, just like um if we're in a 3D port. Now in the UV map everything moves you don't have uh, uh three axes in here you only have two you only have x and y you know what i'm saying so we're going to move this on the x and i'm going to hold shift to uh do it in increments and i'm gonna put it like right there on the edge right there inside on that that wall and then i'm going to go over here and grab this side right here g x and then move this over as well until it's to this right on that wall as well. All right, and then come down here. Now instead of um, stretching this, well, I can stretch it a little bit to get that square shape back. So that's G. Hold on. After I select this area right here, I'm gonna hit G, then Y. So move it on the Y. I'm gonna wait till I. Well, that's almost there. Yeah, that's almost square too. Yeah, that's square too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah that's good. That is good. Um, then, then go up here on the top and then GY. Um, go down about right there. All right, so I'm even on all sides now. So that's how you are um, when you're UV mapping and you want to, you know, even things up or move your textures and stuff. Because I can easily grab all of these and just like in a 3D port, I can hit R to rotate and rotate it. You can rotate, move to the left and right, all of that good little stuff. That's why I prefer UV mapping in Blender as opposed to UV mapping in, uh, in, in Unity. Uh, I tried looking at a tutorial to UV unwrap in Unity one time, and I was just, uh, I was just, uh, 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 uh it, it, it wasn't gonna work for me. <laughs> it just was not gonna work. All right, so we have our slate in our, um, in our storage closet. So now we're looking at the entryway. What you think, city? What you think, city, for that entryway there, cuz? white marble. Alright, alright, we can do some white marbles around here. Around here, alright, alright. Some marble tiles maybe? Wanna do some marble tiles? Let's see what they got. So let me see this one right here. This what is what is that? That's gray. Here's white. There yeah. What you see? Oh you start from the top. Yeah well you can see from the top and then scroll down slowly. Mm -hmm. Keep going, keep going. All right. The, um, the ones with the, so the row with the, um, metallic in it? 
12 which is gold. Which the you, second one? Yep, that one right there. Yep. Uh, oh, yeah, that's that's nice. I never, I never seen these cards. No, somebody up in that thing, you know what I'm saying? Alright, like they may, may have gotten some more, um, some more tiles up in this yeah. thing. Well, I don't do gold, I do silver, but I, I like this sign. All right, so now that we have and that it's in going there. in Kip's house, not mine. So. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure that when I post this, I'm going to be like, uh, 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 texturing by City Girl. Can't you, um, can you adjust, once you apply the texture, can you adjust the coloring? Uh, yes, in Photoshop. In Photoshop, oh, you can. Maybe, but I always do all of my adjustments in Photoshop. So if there is a way, it's probably done through the uh, through the uh, uh, the shader editor. Now they have yeah. a shader in editor. Photoshop, I would just make it black and white so that it would remove the gold. Now in the shader editor, if you end up doing tutorials on like uh, creating shaders inside of um, inside of Blender, you can create seamless um, seamless shaders as well inside of Blender and bake them and stuff. I just haven't I, I haven't I haven't gotten into that like that's whoo okay. all right so we got out of marble gonna go down to our base color now go to image texture select open go to our textures and grab that marble wait for it to update and then assign all right so let's take a look from a top view now at what we're working at Alright, and we are going to unwrap this. Okie dokie dokie. A little bit. <laughs> mm -hmm. We're going to hit A. We're going to scale up. Let's see here. Let's move that on to X. Also look at um texturing our doors if we want. You mean instead of doing an inset? <laughs> oh shoot, you can you can do you can do an inset then also you can come and over here. Uh, you can go down to where is it at? Uh, it's one in here. So you can search for if you want to grab a, a texture for um for a door, and then you can also inset you can inset these portions of the door if you um uh, if you would like. Oh, you know. uh, okay. So that would have been much easier than what I was trying to do. You know what I'm saying so, like these here and uh. Oh, like that first one. Which one? In that same row, the first door. This one right here. 
That was kind of, well, I, I was doing more square than that, but that's kind of like the, the idea of what I was going for. Gotcha, gotcha. Now see, now see what, these also, you can also take these into, um, into Photoshop. You know what I'm saying, and mess around with them and stuff like that. So let's, yeah, let's just grab one. Now, if, now see, now see, now that's the thing, right? So if you, if I end up using this, I'm gonna probably end up going into Photoshop and uh, and healing that area, and removing yeah. and removing their doorknob. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and I would like to point out though, their doorknob looks like mine. <laughs> <laughs> you sure enough chose the door, city. <laughs> Alright, so uh, let's add a material door. Or you can do your own door. You know what I'm saying? But I'll just I'll just I'm just gonna texture just one of these just to give you an idea. Cause uh these also these doors also come with the uh, what you call them joints, the uh uh the in that like the little entryway construction that's around them. That um I don't know I don't know what it's called. The hoop. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep, yep. Let's, let's see. Let's go there. Let's go here. Grab this door. And then edit mode. Select the face. Assign the door. Then unwrap. Alright, so you can place this over on the other side. So I'll just go over here, right here. Hit rotate. 180 degrees to flip it and then from there you want to go into here you want to grab your top portion GY I'm not going to place it up, uh, in the encasement since I don't have an encasement here grab the bottom portion GY up a little bit grab this side over here GX and then grab this side over here and GX or if I wanted to to make it not just go all the way here but that's not going to be right so yeah. so yeah from that point you'll go into Photoshop get your little healing tool and just blot out all of that or you can just create you a doorknob to go over it or um, get your knife tool if you want to do that. I could I could actually show you that real quick. Show y'all the knife tool. So, say for instance, I wanted to sculpt this area right here. I would um, hit K to bring up my knife tool. I'm gonna start from this line here for it to um, give it a cut in there, and then from there. Just like in Photoshop, you can go around this. Then once you get it right there, once you cut around something, you, you just can't like cut this off or something like that. Well you can cut it by uh, by right clicking and then you can start cutting from somewhere else. But to lock this in you will press enter. And this type of bullshit should have happened right there. But it's still cut it's still cut around it. But if I select it with the face faces, what it what Blender does is it attaches vertices to certain areas and stuff. You know what I'm saying? To kind of uh, 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 do some little weird shit but to fix all of that can let's see would you work no it will not so you can just hit your knife tool again start from there enter and uh, go to edge select select that edge right there right click and dissolve it dissolve edges delete it 
Damn, from that point, you could probably let's see here. Grab this one here, connect it to that one, hit join. Then edge select this whole edge right here and dissolve it as well. Then you can just grab this, extrude it. first do a control A to apply rotation and scale then go back in the, the edit mode and then hit control B to bevel so if you want to if you wanted to do it that way and it looks like it's you know the doorknob that's on there that's pretty cool so it just just depends on you know how you want to how you want to do it you know what I'm saying uh, edit mode now I can go in uh, x-ray mode grab all of these and then delete faces so yeah if you wanted to have it like that that's pretty cool though you know what I'm so it's just you no know, different different little different little um, methods that you could that you could use you know, especially with the knife tool the knife tool comes in handy in um, a couple of different cases so yeah, so again, whatever else you want to do to a door. But what I was um saying to you, City, is if I wanted to do an inset on here, right? Um, let's see, select that uh, face, select, select that face. Do my oh, my inset's messed up. Hold up, let me go back to object mode. Let me apply my trans my rotation and scale. Then go back into edit. Oh, hold on. Let me tell y'all. Let me show y'all why I did that. Let me, let me show you. Let me show you why. All right, so if I hit inset now, right? Damn, still. Make sure, make sure I'm in here correctly. All right, cool. Okay, so now, go back to object mode, select this door, hit edit mode, and now try to do an inset. Dang, it's still not doing it. Uh, hopefully, I'll get a chance to show that to y'all one day of why I applied those... Uh, I apply uh, rotation and scale. So if I did an inset here, then I want to zoom in on this corner. That's why I say about when stuff is thin, like thin doors and stuff like that, and you do extrusions and stuff, you know, it can, it can, you know, move kind of fast. So I, that's why I zoom in so I can see, you know, what I'm saying how much I'm uh, extruding something, you know. And I could probably maybe do another inset. About right there. But instead of extruding this back out, let's make sure our vertex select is on. I'm going to do a G, Y, no, no, G, X. G, X, and then snap it right there to that one as I bring all of that up. So you, and then you can, and then at that point, it's just up to you to do, if you want to do another inset, and then do another uh, extrusion, or another inside extrusion or something. So it's just all about what you, you know, what I'm saying what you want to do with it. And then instead of putting a material um, a texture on there, you know, you can just uh, put any material. You can do a, you can go on the outside with a different material, then go on the inside. However you want to, um, however you want to set that up all right so let's see here where are our steps I mean I didn't I didn't I didn't I swear I didn't uh, label nothing let me see steps. I was just gonna say I don't know how you work without labeling man yo to the grace of the almighty <laughs> Photoshop no no <laughs> you know what I'm saying like you know, I and I did this even when I was um when I was uh, uh an, an engineer, uh, audio engineer. Oh my God, man! Like yo, I would oh horribly labeling. So where's that top end? Then? These two right here are together. Oh, I might as well. Oh no, that's 
press on one of the pair of steps. Pull and squeeze from right here. Okay, so this is landing to Okay, so say for instance I want to join all of this stuff together, so I hit Control J, and you see a bunch of stuff disappear. That is because we have some things in here that may have some modifiers and other stuff applied to it. So let's click on this one, go down to our modifiers, and see if we got a modifier applied. If you do have a modifier applied, just click Apply. The next steps, click Apply. Third steps, click Apply. Alright, so we should be able to select all of these now. And then hit Control J. And we're good. Okay, I'll just name this steps now. Alright, make sure all that's together. Yeah. Alright, we're going to edit mode. Now I like to texture the top of my steps. So we're gonna grab all of our tops here. All right, we're going to look at that from the top view. All right, so what are what, what are we going with for these steps? Mahogany. Oh my sweat, sweaty God, man. She finna, she finna, man. She finna, she finna tear my house up, man. My house finna be looking ugly. <laughs> you trying to get me back, aren't you? You trying to, are you trying to get me back? Yes, she did, <laughs> and I'm, well, and I'm I going there too. I think they even got the even the even the name uh, my heart spell that. Oh wait, just go with just go with the dark wood. It's all right, all right, all right. Oh. Ooh, no, that's There's your mahogany. Oh, Oops, that's too red. Okay, that's how about walnut? <laughs> Do they have ebony? Oh yes, like that last one in row two is dark. How about something dark like that? Well, this or one right even darker. Black wood would be pretty. That looks, that looks nice. That says black. Oh, that's just a twisted. That's pretty. How's that blue? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, you got wood at least. Yes, yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so add in our. Default material, then add in another material, call it black wood. And then we're going to go to base color, image texture, open. Go to our textures and grab that wood. All right, so, okay, so you seen the first time, right, when I, uh, when I applied a texture, so let's apply this, right? And uh, true enough, I could I could go here and I could click unwrap, right? And you will see the unwrapping in all different um all different directions. So let's come out of let's go into object mode so we can see the grains of the wood. Let me turn the um the specular down a little bit so you guys can see this to see if it did it right. Okay, so it did it all in one direction there. Okay, okay. Except for these, except for those. Well, uh, well, yeah, you know, it's it's the right direction due to the way that the wood is going. So yeah, that's yeah, that's correct. That's correct. But what I was going to show you was, um, if you didn't want to do it like that, right? You could do a um, orthographic view, and when you go to unwrap, instead of doing a regular unwrap, I could unwrap it from my view. 
from from the way I'm looking at it. So if I click on project from view, watch what happens over in the UV window. It does it to it to that shape. You know what I'm saying? And then from that point you can go here, hit all and scale up if you wanted to. Which Saying. So it kind of, so it, it did it the same as the UV unwrap over there, except for right here. For if you wanted to actually change that, you know what I'm saying, depending on what you were doing, you could go in here, you could grab just these now, and then you could go over here in your UV window that you got them selected, hit rotate, and then 90 degrees, and enter. And it changed them. And if you wanted to do it, do that one like that. Or if you wanted to put that at an angle, you could grab that one, go over here, rotate 45. Oh, other way, other way, other way. Uh, which I'm going the wrong way. Rotate, I wanted to do this way. Well, no, I just eyeball it. I'm saying it did just a just depends on however you want to lay that in. I'm going to leave it like that, but uh, yeah, however you want to like set up your set up your uh, your wood. Uh, we could go in here. We could do edit. Now, when it comes to stuff like this, right? You may want to be a little bit detailed. Uh, you can select these. Shift select. Shift select. Shift select these now if any any of you guys know um, of how I build you know that normally anytime I put steps into a um, into a world you know I have um, I have lights in the uh, it coming from the steps emitting from the steps so we're gonna grab all of these boxes and now we're going to do an inset, inset all of them. And then we're going to do a, we're going to hit Alt and E to do an extrude along the normals. Because I have, I have, I have um, 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 uh, faces that are pointing in different directions. So if I was to just hit extrude, you know what I'm saying, and try to extrude in one direction of one face, then all of those faces will flow in that one direction. But if I do extrude faces along normals, it's going to extrude the faces by the direction that the faces are facing. So hit that. And then if I hold shift now to do increments, if I go up, it brings them out. But we're going to go in a little bit. It's about right there. And then we're going to hit plus, hit new. And we're going to add light one. I'm going to go here. I'm going to change this to like maybe a soft, soft type of color. Open this up a little bit. Go down to my emission. Click on my emission. I'm going to take the dropper tool and I'm going to take it up here to that same color. Hit the drop on there. And then I'm going to go here. I'm going to uh, turn up the light cast a little bit by like maybe 10. And then I'm going to assign it. So now you've just seen all of that light up. But in order to sh actually show you how it looks, I'm going to go to my rendering tab up here and I'm going to turn my bloom on. So you can see the illumination from it. So, yeah. Nice. I really like that. And that way, that way after I, like, say for instance, I take this, oh God, where am I at? I, I, this is one thing I hate about Blender, trying to navigate sometimes. Mm -hmm. that, you know what I'm saying? Oh my goodness. You know what? I'm about Especially to. Especially in the tight areas. All the, the tight areas. I'm about all to hide all of that. Just me, much <laughs> I'm just gonna hide it. So as you see now, when I go around that, you know, oh, if, that I, really nice. I like it. if I go yeah. into Unity and bake that, then instead of having to have um, like lamps and stuff, you know, what I'm saying light fixtures on the walls, these mm -hmm. steps will illuminate this entire this entire stairwell. Yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> all right so that will do it for the um 
for the uh, 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 first floor and the stairwell. And we will uh, do the second floor and the roof and the porch on Thursday. What's the day? Is it Thursday? Let's say Tuesday. What's the day?